Welcome to section 24 of the parasites. This is our overview figure showing the parasites you need to know for step 1. In this lecture, we will be talking about the first trematode on our list, the Schistosoma species. This diagram shows the life cycle of Schistosoma species. So we'll start here with the egg. Once released, these eggs will hatch in fresh water, and this releases larvae. These larvae will then enter freshwater snails. Within the snails, the larvae will grow into mature larvae and then be released. These mature larvae are called circuriae. So all of these circuriae, as you can see here, will then be floating around in the freshwater, just waiting for someone to have an open wound. The circuriae will then enter a human host through their skin wound and then enter the bloodstream. Once in the bloodstream, the parasite will go to the liver where it will mature. Up to this point, you weren't super worried about symptoms. It's what happens next that can lead to problems. Now, two species, Schistosoma mansoni and Schistosoma japanicum, will go to the intestinal vessels and cause intestinal and hepatic schistosomiasis. The third species, Schistosoma hematobium, will then go to the urinary vessels and cause urinary schistosomiasis. And all three species, if chronic, can lead to pulmonary schistosomiasis. In any case, eggs can be released and this continues the cycle. With this conceptual framework, let's dive into the image. Our Schistosoma story takes place with a nice natural stream that empties into this little pond. To the left of the image are two twin sisters who like to play near the pond. The word sister sounds like Schistosoma, so these twin sisters will be our symbol for the Schistosoma species. There are a few species to be aware of, as we mentioned in the previous slide, Schistosoma hematobium, mansoni, and japanicum and we have a symbol for each one of those species. Now these twin sisters love everything about this pond. One of the things they like the most are the toads that they can always find on this tree here. This tree swarming with toads represents trematodes, which is a type of parasitic worm, also known as a fluke. In any case, Schistosoma is a type of trematode. Now let's look at the top left where that stream empties into the pond. That stream is kind of odd, because it produces some weird mutations of things that flow through it. For example, these eggs are falling from the stream, but they are no ordinary eggs. You can see they have these strange mutant spikes on their sides. This represents the lateral spines that can be seen on the eggs of Schistosoma mansoni and japanicum. Here is a microscopic image showing the cyst with a lateral spine, which you can see protruding from that lateral side. Now there are several more eggs that have smashed up against the rocks. Notice how these eggs have terminal spines. This represents the terminal spine associated with Schistosoma hematobium. Here is a microscopic image showing an egg of Schistosoma hematobium, which has this terminal spine right there on the end. Notice it's not on the side, it's just on the very end. Now knowing which egg has a spine on the side and which has a terminal spine is not very important. The important thing to remember is that Schistosoma species have eggs with spines. So if you see this image on the test, or an image like this on the test, just think Schistosoma. Look closely at the eggs smashing against the rocks in this freshwater stream. The fact that they are hatching here in the water is to help you remember that Schistosoma species hatch in freshwater only. This means eggs don't hatch inside humans or snails, they only hatch in freshwater. Now from the hatched eggs come these nasty little larvae. Let's zoom up to see these better. See those nasty things shooting out of the eggs? So larva coming out of the eggs will help you remember that Schistosoma eggs will release immature larvae. Before reaching a human, these larvae must first find a snail to infest. Now most of the snails got away as you can see them scurrying on the dirt to the right. But this yellow glowing snail was the unlucky victim of these mutant larvae. The whole point of this idea is to help you remember that snails are the first hosts of Schistosoma larvae, and you could also call them the intermediate host, or the host of the parasite before it reaches the human. Well, this glowing infected snail is now releasing these little toxic circles, which then flow downstream. These circles will travel to find a human to infect. Circle sounds like circuriae. Circuriae are larvae, but they are more mature and those are released from the snails and then go to infect humans. You can now see this woman standing here in the pond about to be infested with these little circles. These will infect her by reaching her skin. This represents the fact that Securiae infect by entering through open wounds in the skin. Currently, this woman is obnoxiously aiming her laser pointer at the crotch of this man preparing to dive into the pond. This red light directed at his crotch represents hematuria, or red bloody urine, which occurs as a result of schistosoma infection of the bladder. The schistosoma species that causes bladder infection with hematuria is schistosoma hematobium. To keep these ideas together, I just remember how similar hematobium and hematuria sound. Hematobium, hematuria. With that in mind, schistosoma hematobium and the important details specific to it will be represented up here in this area on the cliff. As already discussed, schistosoma hematobia can cause hematuria due to bladder infestation. It can also cause squamous cell carcinoma of the bladder. To help you remember this, we have included this cancer hope ribbon up here, which is our recurring symbol for cancer. 
It's hanging just above the diving hematuria man to help you remember bladder cancer with Schistosoma hematobium. Now let's move on to the last two species, Schistosoma mansoni and Schistosoma japanicum. To represent mansoni, we have a big mansion back here, mansion for mansoni. This mansion is actually the Japanese embassy in the area, so you can see some Japanese style towers there on the sides, Japanese for japanicum. Everything specific to Schistosoma mansoni and japanicum will be on the ground level not up on the cliff like Schistosoma hematobium was. Now here are some kids playing around the pond like hooligans. They wouldn't be typical rowdy boys if they didn't slap each other on their bare skin when they were given the opportunity. Look how this fellow has whacked his friend leaving a big welt that has the shape of a very enlarged spleen. This represents the fact that Schistosoma mansoni and japanicum can cause splenomegaly. When this kid got smacked, he lost his footing and broke off a piece of the dirt which is now spilling into the pond creating lots of muddy water. This muddy water represents diarrhea. Schistosomae mansoni and japanicum infect the intestinal blood vessels, so patients can have diarrhea. Also notice that that chunk of dirt he broke off from the edge has left behind what looks like an ulcer, like an ulcer on the pond's edge. This represents intestinal ulcerations, and patients with Schistosoma mansoni and japanicum can have this ulceration, which leads to blood loss through the stool. A pattern that will become solid in your mind regarding hematology is that patients with chronic intestinal bleeding often develop iron deficiency anemia. So patients with chronic schistosoma, japanicum, and mansoni are no exception. To help reinforce the idea of intestinal bleeding through ulcers, we see this scuffle has scratched up his leg, and now he's bleeding into the water, creating bloody water. And remember with that chronic blood loss, that can lead to iron deficiency anemia. Now these boys were playing with an inflatable toy ship they brought to the pond. Curiously, one of the portholes on the ship is actual glass. Fragile glass at that. For those who don't know, a porthole is a small exterior window to a ship. The makers of this line of inflatable toys has likely been sued into oblivion by now. I mean, look what happened to this kid. When he lost his footing, he accidentally shattered the porthole, cutting his skin horribly. This broken porthole represents portal hypertension. The intestinal vessels, or mesenteric vessels, infested by Schistosoma, Mansoni, and Japanicum carry blood to the liver. So it makes sense that the portal tract would suffer from chronic schistosomiasis, creating portal hypertension. Now the portal vein leads right to the liver, so the liver is often infected and becomes enlarged, so patients with schistosomiasis can develop hepatomegaly. To help you remember this, we have shown you this super fat Dalmatian dog falling off that toy boat. The poor dog was floating on the toy before it started sinking. Now the fat dog is desperately clinging to keep from drowning. And when you think of this fat dog with that big liver-shaped spot, remember hepatomegaly. Now if you look to the very right edge of the pond, you can see those gnarled fibrous branches stretching over this area of water. Some of those branches have reached the dog with his liver-shaped spot. This idea represents liver cirrhosis. Liver cirrhosis occurs as a result of prolonged inflammation and lots of fibrosis ruining the liver, just like these gnarly fibrous branches are jabbing this dog. Interestingly, chronic infections from any of the species can also cause pulmonary hypertension. To help you remember this, we have another kid preparing a little meal in a pressure cooker. You can see the steam the young man is inhaling, filling his lungs with warm air. Look at him take that deep breath. The attention drawn to the lungs with that deep breath, plus the idea of the pressure from the pressure cooker, is here to help you remember pulmonary hypertension. The fact that the pressure cooker is on the ground level, where everything related to Schistosoma mansoni and japanicum are located, indicates that these two species can cause this outcome. And if you look at that steam rise up to the top of the cliff, where that hematuria diver is, represents that Schistosoma hematobium can also cause pulmonary hypertension. So again, pulmonary hypertension can be caused by any of the Schistosoma species. Now these kids brought some pretzels to have for a snack when they got hungry. It pays to plan ahead. And it looks like that hematuria diver also brought some pretzels. Well, these pretzels represent praziquantel, which is the treatment for all three Schistosoma species. Now that we've covered all the items of the image, let's do a question to apply what you've learned. A 65-year-old Middle Eastern female presents to the clinician due to worsening fatigue and dark red diarrhea that began five years ago. She emigrated to the United States one year ago. Physical examination reveals a palpable spleen and liver enlargement. A stool sample was sent to the pathologist and the results are shown below. Which of the following is true regarding this pathogen? A. It infects the vasculature of the bladder. B. Eggs must hatch in salt water. C. It can inflate lung alveoli causing cough. Or D. It can cause a decreased mean corpuscular volume, MCV, and hemoglobin. Hopefully you noticed from the micrograph this distinctive lateral spine, indicating that we are dealing with a schistosoma egg. Earlier in the lecture, I stated that lateral spines, like this, are found in schistosoma mansoni and japanicum, while terminal spines, which would be located right here, are present with schistosoma hematobium. You may also recall that I said you don't need to try to remember which spine 
belongs to which species, because the clinical scenario will inevitably tell you the answer. This patient's presentation is consistent with which species, Mansoni and Japanicum. Hopefully you've noticed that this patient has hepatosplenomegaly, with that palpable spleen and liver enlargement. She also has dark red stools that are often runny. Those details point to Schistosoma mansoni and Japanicum. With that in mind, the correct answer is choice D. It can cause a decreased MCV and hemoglobin. This is describing iron deficiency anemia, something that occurs with prolonged intestinal bleeding. She also says she's had worsening fatigue, which is likely a result of the anemia. Recall from the image that intestinal ulceration can lead to iron deficiency anemia, as represented by this ulcerated dirt edge and the blood loss in the water. And we know that this clinical presentation is consistent with Schistosoma mansoni and Japanicum because it's on the ground level, the same level as that mansion for the Japanese embassy. And lastly, eggs of schistosomiasis of any kind have those awesome spines on them. Now A is incorrect because this is true of schistosoma hematobium, not schistosoma mansoni and japanicum. Hematuria sounds like hematobium. Now B is incorrect because the eggs must hatch in freshwater. After all, they need to infect snails, and snails do not live in salt water because salt kills snails. Lastly, C is incorrect because infiltration of lung alveoli causing cough describes Loeffler syndrome, which is associated with strongyloides, ascaris, and hookworm, and it's not associated with schistosoma species. If you chose C, you may have been thinking of pulmonary hypertension, but remember that this issue is a problem with pulmonary arterioles, not alveoli, and that should be all you need to know about schistosoma.